Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to do a little bit of carving. Well, you may be wondering exactly what a carving show is doing on Alternative Tuesdays. And it's a carving show because we're working with something different. And this is what we're working on. Well, actually, this is a bucket of what we're working on. So let's quit talking and get over to the bench. I got to show you what's in this bucket because I'm really excited about this one. Well, years ago, I managed to get a hold of some of this stuff, and this is from the east coast of Canada, and what it is, is soapstone. And this has been sitting in my shop for years and years and years, and I've wanted to carve something, and it wasn't until my recent vacation to the coast that I thought of what it was that I wanted to carve. And I got to be honest with you, I've never ever carved anything like this. I don't even know really where to start, but I guess we're just going to fly by the seat of our pants and see if we can't come up with something that looks like something that shouldn't be there or was there before or whatever. We're going to come up with something here. So I'm really excited about this. You know what? Let's just get into it. Well, I have an idea where I want to carve a whale tail out of this. And I'm kind of looking at it, and I think it might be the right shape, and I think it might be the right size, but I'm not really sure how to go about it. So what I'm thinking I'm going to use is a Dremel tool with a grinding stone in it. Now, because I don't know uh, what type of dust this is going to create, I will be putting on a dust mask and, of course, safety glasses to keep the stuff out of my eyes. But I think the first thing I want to start off with is I want to be able to cut the V here where the whale tail is going to be. I don't even know if this is going to show up on here. It probably won't. It doesn't look like it will. Again, this is a, a complete experiment here, guys. I'm thinking maybe a magic marker might be a little better. I mean, this is showing up, but I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera. Well, let's see if we can draw this out and just see how it works, because it's just an idea. And uh, you know what? If it doesn't work, well, we had some fun doing it, didn't we? So here we go. We're going to draw this whale tail just like that. And my thought is that it'll come down to the base and it'll stand up on the end. Now, I don't know how fragile this stuff is because I've never worked with it. I'm already seeing some flaking of the material here off the bottom, but I don't know if that's just pieces from being knocked around over the years or not. Well... <clears throat> Let's, let's start off with the top of this whale tail and see if this grinding stone is going to do anything for me or not. Well, I'm kind of wondering if maybe I can get some faster material removal if I take it to the scroll saw. So let's try that out. Well, although that seemed to be working somewhat, I wasn't really a fan of the way it felt. Um, it didn't feel secure enough for me to continue, and I've always said on this show, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. So I'm going to go back to the slow method here of grinding off the top of the tail. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, we can see that this is working here as I clear the dust away from it. So I'm going to continue to carve and grind away the top of this. I don't think we need a full video of me grinding that shape, but I'm going to continue the slow process and see how we make out. And hopefully when I come back to you, we will have the top of the tail here at least shaped out. Okay, so first impressions on the whole thing. Uh, this stuff is brutal. I never expected it to be this hard. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, really, uh, you think soap, right? Soap, it's soft, but soap stone. Uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Either way, we're gonna keep going on this. My hands are sore, my fingers are sore. I don't know if you saw that last clip, I've changed it to uh, like a, a pencil attachment so I can hold it a little better. My hands were cramping up holding the Dremel tool. Um, so something smaller or more user friendly on your hands might be an option for you. I think from what I can see from the mess of soapstone on my desk, or my bench rather, uh, I think I may look into uh, maybe a little bit of extra dust collection. <clears throat> I think I'm going to get a shop vac hose over there with uh, a, a smaller port or a wider nose on it to take away some of the finer dust because I am seeing some of that float around and I'm glad I chose to wear the dust mask. So we're going to continue with the design and I'm going to grab a marker now and we're going to draw out what I think the bottom of the tail should look like. Well with the top edge kind of carved the way I think it might be. <laughs> it's just really a, an experiment. Uh, we're going to draw out the bottom half and I'm not quite sure how it should look here but we're going to bring the tail down something like this and we're going to bring it back up on this side to meet with this corner. Kind of this sort of a configuration and as well then the tail will come down and finish off down here at the bottom making this part here the base of it for it to stand on so i think the first thing that i want to do is try to carve out this perimeter to get rid of all of that excess material I'll start by using the stone to kind of draw along the outline here and then we'll start chipping away some of this material. I'm not sure really how to go about it. I'm going to try some files and maybe a rasp and see how we make out with that as well. Well, as much as that rasp takes it down half decently, you can see there I've just snapped a chip out of this and I think it might be a little too aggressive for this piece of soapstone. So I will continue with the grinding stone and carry on in hopes of not breaking my piece. We'll just brush away some of the dust here. I don't know if you can see the shape that I'm coming up with or if it's even making any sense to you or how the video is showing it, but I think we can see the whale tail starting to be formed here. 
I need to get a large bit of this material here removed and I'm not quite sure how to do it. This method here is painfully slow and I honestly don't know if it's causing damage as we're getting fracture breakages here along the side. Now I did that with the rasp, but I think what I'm going to try is possibly a larger grinding stone. Um, I don't want to go too power tool on this because I don't want this dust flying everywhere. I can see that I've got some kind of fragments here or scales that are going to be popping off as I carve. I'm not too concerned about that as long as I get the final image. Well, so I don't think you need to see me get this taken down to shape. I'm going to take it down and then I'll come back and see ya and we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. Well, we have the general shape and I gotta tell you, this has been a tough go. I'm, uh, I'm surprised at how tough this stuff is and I guess I shouldn't be as it is, <laughs> it is stone. Well, now I think the next step here would be to start shaping the body here or the part of the tail. I don't wanna start carving the fins here because I don't want it to get too thin and fragile. So I think the best thing for me to do at this point is to start shaping this section here so that I get the general shape of that. So same process and a lot of time and a lot of dust. This dust collection is working great and while it may look like there's quite a bit still left here on the, the bench, and there is, um, I'd say a, a huge percentage of the airborne particles are going into this hose. So if you're going to give this a whirl, get some form of dust collection on there. So what I'm going to do so this doesn't become a 10 hour video is I'm going to shape the tail and then I'm going to come back and see and we're going to see if we can't uh, get some shape to the fin part after that. Well, part way through our process, we've had <laughs> quite a few pieces actually break off. There's been fracture marks. I can see more cracking happening here. I don't know if this thing is going to survive uh, the entire process, but I'm going to continue with it. I'm going to continue grinding this down and shaping it, and I'm going to start taking off some of the surface of the tail to thin this out. Right now it's rather chunky and bulky and we really need to take this down a lot thinner. Will it survive? I don't know. We will find out soon enough. Well, I've done my best at this point to shape it and thin the tail as much as I can, but there are huge cracks that are coming in, cracks that I did not see when I first started with this piece of stone. Some right across here on the tail, some on some of the top of the fins, and in, I guess, in the spirit of saving the piece, I'm going to stop here. Not to mention that uh, I'm afraid that with it being unstable like it is at the moment by using any kind of power grinding on this, I'm causing this to be dangerous. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of paste wax to it to try to bring out these different colors. And once I get that done, I think maybe we need to glue it onto a base of some kind. Oh, 
Well, that wax really brings out the blacks in that soapstone. I really like that. All right, so I'm gonna finish this off here with some wax and maybe a little bit of a buffing, and I'll get back to you in just a bit. Well, I've had a large piece of this wood up on the rack for years, and honestly, I don't even know the species. It's been told to me, but I don't recall. But I've cut off a small little piece of it, and you can see how much character that has. And I'm just going to take my whale tail here and I'm going to epoxy it right about there and use this as a base. You can see how this came out and I don't know if the lighting is showing it, but oh my gosh, what a nice shine and what a really nice uh, like contrast the way that the wax really brought it out. I buffed it on the lathe basically the same way you would buff a turning um, with wax and diamond honing compound and that sort of thing. And I'm really pleased with the way that that came out. So let's mix some epoxy and get our whale tail glued in place. there you have it. A soapstone whale tail. Guys, did this project turn out the way that I envisioned it? No, not even close. Did it turn out the way I think it should have? Not even close. Did it cause me a lot of aggravation and problems and that sort of thing? Yeah, it sure did. But am I pleased with the results? You're darn right I am. And I had a great time doing it. Frustrations or problems or problem solving is all part of the woodworking, or in this case, soapstone, or in the shop, let's say. It's all part of that process. And the entire purpose of this show isn't to show you how to carve soapstone because even after I finish this whale tail, I still don't know. I'm sure that the methods that I use are barbaric and I probably could have used some different methods or better methods. And the fact that there were internal fractures in the soapstone really didn't help me a lot because pieces kept breaking off and my design kept changing. But with that being said, I stuck to it. And that's the important part. And that's what you need to take away from today's show. The fact that just because something doesn't turn out exactly as you envision it doesn't mean that you can't be happy with the results. And it doesn't mean that you can't learn something from it. Am I going to try to carve soapstone again? You're darn right. And you're probably going to see it here on the show because I had a great time doing it. If you're going to try this sort of thing yourself, I'm going to tell you what I've been telling you throughout the show. Get that dust mask on your face and get some kind of dust collection, whether it be your shot back like what you saw for most of this here, or whether it be a dust collection unit or what have you. It doesn't matter. Get something in place to take away the dust. Although it's just a little Dremel tool, it throws quite a bit. I'm actually shocked at how much it threw around the shop and I ended up having to go around and vacuum things up. So guys, a spectacularly fun project. I had a blast with it. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. And if all you learn from this is to take that step to try something new and to venture forward into something different that's outside of your comfort zone, then it was well worth posting the show on today's episode. So guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss notifications of future shows. I honestly hope you've enjoyed today because I've had a blast. I hope you're going to join me next week, guys. 
when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. I'm going to clean the soapstone out of my glasses. <laughs> uh, you guys look like you're standing in a fog. <laughs>